So hello everyone and welcome to the case 9 of this case discussion series and today we will be discussing a case that I recently encountered and it was a bit complex case. So, so here we have a 50 year old male who presented with uh, cerebellar symptoms of ataxia and the history was not very clear and this is the MRI brain of that particular patient the axial T1 weighted images where we can see that there is some hypo intense lesion in the left cerebellar hemisphere extending up to the vermis and on T2 weighted images we can see that there is corresponding hyper intensity which is seen with prominent cerebellar foliae there is mild mass effect in the form of defacement of the fourth ventricle these are the flare images where we can see that there is subtle hyper intensity that is seen And this is the DWI images where again we can see there is some hyper intense areas which are seen within that particular lesion. This is hyper intensity on DWI and there is corresponding hypo intensity, subtle hypo intensity which was seen on ADC map as well suggesting that there are areas of restriction within the lesion. These are the axial GRE images where we can see intense blooming of the foliae in the left cerebellar hemisphere and these are the post contrast images where we can see that there is subtle leptomeningeal enhancement in that particular area. These are the coronal post contrast images of this patient and where we can see this subtle enhancing area. So this is the report that I had given uh, for this patient that there was a large area of altered signal intensity in the left posterior cerebellar cortex with widened cerebellar foliae which appears hypo intense on T1, hyper intense on T2 and flare and shows a restriction on DWI with reversal on ADC. The area exhibits mass effect in the form of mild defacement of the fourth ventricle and also shows mild post contrast leptomeningeal enhancement and intense blooming of the foliae on GRE sequences likely due to calcifications. The features were suggestive of Lermit Duclos disease, but possibility of subacute infarct and cerebellitis could not be ruled out according to the clinical history given. And there were age related involutional changes in the brain as well. So, uh, what exactly is Lermit Duclos disease? So, dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma, perhaps uh, better known as Lermit Duclos disease, is a rare tumor of the cerebellum. Uh, appearing as thickening and increased T2 signal of the cerebellar foliae giving the lesion a characteristic striated or tigroid appearance. The dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma typically presents in young adults although they have been encountered at all ages. A number of associated conditions have been described with Lermit Duclos uh, of which the most important is Cordon syndrome and it's a part of cold syndrome when it is associated with Cordon syndrome. Cold is actually Cordon uh, Lermit Duclos uh, disease syndrome and uh, other than that uh, there are disorders of cortical malformations uh, also associated with this particular disease and macro uh, macroglossia and localized gigantism also have been seen along with this particular disease. On imaging particularly small tumors may be asymptomatic uh, and uh, on CT it there are calcifications that are sometimes seen. Uh, and on MRI, uh, it gives a striated or tigroid appearance because of the widened cerebellar foliae and it appears hypo intense on T1 and hyper intense on T2 weighted images and affects a particular uh, uh, cerebellar hemisphere, occasionally extending up to the vermis but does not actually extend to the contralateral hemisphere and subtle enhancement may be seen usually superficially due to vascular prol proliferation. And on DWI, it may show hyperintensity that is because of T2 shine through effect. So, the differentials for uh, Lermit Duclos disease include uh, cerebellitis and subacute cerebellar infarction. Uh, and on the clinical settings, uh, if there is sepsis or acute deterioration, uh, we can give such, uh, such diagnosis. So these are the two important differentials for the condition that is acute cerebellitis as well as uh, subacute uh, cerebellar infarct. So acute cerebellitis or acute cerebellar ataxia represents a spectrum of inflammatory process characterized by sudden onset of cerebellar dysfunction and affects children 
and is usually related as a consequence of primary or secondary infection and much less commonly as a result of post vaccination reaction the important sign to uh, to help us diagnose a subacute cerebellar infarct is depth of fissure sign this is the depth of fissure sign it's also called apex of fissure sign is a radiographic sign that helps to recognize cerebellar infarcts in children as well as in adults and the key imaging feature uh, is t2 and flare hyper intensity confined to the gray matter at the depths of the cerebellar fissures typically sparing the subjacent white matter in smaller infarcts in addition small infarcts may occur along cerebellar fissures also with relative sparing of a subjacent white matter so this is very important this depth of fissure sign which helps us differentiate subacute infarct from uh, uh, other entities uh, that are affecting the cerebellum so here i gave the diagnosis of lermet duclos first because of the intense blooming that i saw on gre images which was suggestive of uh, calcifications and calcifications are usually seen in lermet duclos more commonly than cerebellitis and uh, uh, subacute infarcts and but i gave the possibility of cerebellitis and uh, uh, subacute infarct as well because the clinical history was not very well known